gentlemen, from New York City, Joe Garagiola! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much. See, I got to tell you a story, because I'm especially proud of this first spot that we have. What happens usually when I'm traveling, especially, you know, I go across the country in airports, people say, how do you get the central character, the real person? And I always tell them, hey, I have nothing to do with it. We have a great staff of people. They find all these people. I have nothing to do with it. But this first one, let me tell you, I'm proud of it because I found him. And here's how I found him. I have this friend, Leroy Lanuti. He's a nice Italian boy. He's got this big dinner, invites my family over, and his two kids, he's got a boy named Brett and a daughter named Gia, they're telling me about this boy that they know, and he's really great. I said, well, what can he do? And they show me a bunch of clippings, and I was so impressed, I told Mimi O'Brien, and she found him, and he's here, and you're gonna meet him, but first you're gonna meet the panel. Here they come. Here's Bill Cullen. Peggy Cass! Barry Nelson! And Kitty Carlisle! Right now, let's meet a man who holds an underwater diving record. Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Neil Watson. Number two. My name is Neil Watson. And number three. My name is Neil Watson. <laughs> number three is really Richard Boone. Have gun, we'll travel. <laughs> Didn't he suffer? Take a good look at him, huh? Okay, here are Neil Watson's, what do we call, watery words. I, Neil Watson, am a swimmer and diver. And recently, I swam a distance of 70 miles all underwater. I use standard scuba equipment and entered the water at Isla Morada in the Florida Keys. In order to stay submerged, my supply boat and dinghy followed me, and I eventually used up 25 air tanks. I ended my swim at Miami. I had intended to swim 150 miles, but I lost both my underwater light and communication with the surface. As a diver, I hold the world's record for a compressed air dive of 437 feet. It was a dangerous record to establish. Six divers have died trying to beat my record and go deeper. Signed, Neil Watson. Okay, let's start with Bill Cullen. Neil, number two, aren't there, uh, aren't there dives deeper than 437 feet, free dives? Uh, mixed gas dives, Nitrogen not compressed things, air. Nitrogen things like that. Yes, uh-huh. Number three, how, what was the weight of the ballast you used for this swim? Uh, 70 pounds. Uh, number one, you had on a wetsuit, so I imagine this was pretty much a, a test of endurance and resistance to the elements, or the water and the cold in this case, was right. it not? Uh, num number one, uh, when you lost your, how long did you, were you underwater before you began to lose orientation? I don't mean like, like the bends or the, night, what, the narcosis of the deep. I mean to know where the boat was and where you were at all times. Well, it was very difficult because we ran into some trouble. Uh, we ran out of lights. When we put the lights in the water, they just floated all over the place. And we had some difficulty after about 10 hours. Number two, did you have a company? Buzzer and let's go to Peggy Cass. Number three, why do you need a light under the water? Let's see where you're going. But, I mean, it's just water. I mean, how can you see there's no streets down there? Well, and also they had to keep track of where I was, and they could watch me a lot better if they could see that I was illuminated. I see, but number two, wouldn't the light attract the sharks? That's, that's one of the problems with the swim, but you have to, the, the swim takes like close to 20 hours, so you have to swim through a night, so you have to have lighting. I, well, yeah, but I mean, what about those old sharks? There's plenty of sharks down there. That's one of the problems you encounter with the swim. Well, did, any, did you see any? Uh, on one of the practice swims, we had some problems with the sharks. But you, you, just... swim, you swim behind the cage, and if they get too bad, uh, you can swim into the cage. Oh, you mean a cage? Buzzer, and let's go to Barry Nelson. I see. Uh, number uh, three, this cage. Now, how, f how far is that from the boat itself? It was um, on a, uh, attached by an umbilical cord, which was about 30 feet. I mean, are you sure that you can get into the cage in time and oh, everything? Oh, sure, definitely. I see. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, number uh, two, what kind of practice do you do? Uh, primarily swimming, running, jumping rope, and swimming. Uh, I do about four hours a day training for uh, it in the open uh, water. Number one, um, at what point does the water seem to get very, very cold as you uh, descend? As you descend? Yeah. After about 30 feet. And ab about... <laughs> Let's go to Kitty. Gee, thank you. There seem to be two issues here, number two. One is that you swam a long distance of 70 miles, and the other one is that you hold a record for deep sea diving, deep diving. Right. Didn't, you didn't do those two things at once. No, no. One, one record was set in 68, and the other was set about six months ago. I see. Now, which one, number three, which one was set in uh, six months ago? Uh, 1968. Uh, no, which, uh, which uh, part of, the, of your uh, feet? Did you do the dive now, or did you do no, the... No, that was the uh, long-distance underwater swim. The long-distance underwater swim, mm -hmm. I see. And number one, when you do the long-distance underwater swim, uh, and you say sharks are coming, and number two said there are problems, what are the problems? The problem is to get out of their way before they get to you. You don't hit them on the nose. That's considered no. good practice, no? No. They don't go away if you hit them on the no, nose? No, they don't go away. Boy, if you miss this, <laughs> you're in big trouble. Okay, the game is over. They have to vote. And Do you think it is number one? Or do you think it is number two? Or do you think it is number three? Okay, Bill Cullen, you got to start. How'd you vote? I went for number two, Joe. Okay, Peggy. I heard that about you, Bill. I voted for number two, too. <laughs> All right, Barry. I voted for number two. Shallow breathing, I saw him. You going to make it unanimous? I am. He's got great big biceps. Great big biceps. It is unanimous. Okay, $500 if all the votes are wrong. They're all in. Will the real Neil Watson please stand up? Uh, ah, they got him, yeah. Let's find out about the imposters. Number one, what is your name and what do you do? My name is Shelley Gordon. With my wife, I run the Gordons, a party consulting and catering firm here in New York. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Number three, what is your name, what do you do? My name is David Glatt from Miami Beach, Florida, and I'm in the music and investment business. Mm -hmm, okay. Neil, just quickly, I have two questions. Number one, six men died. Do you have an opinion on why they died and you were able to make it? Well, I did, a, I did extensive training for over a year to develop a tolerance to something called nitrogen narcosis, which is a hallucinogenic effect you get from deep diving. And through using um, practices in, I was able to slow down my respiratory system, which eliminated getting oxygen poisoning. Is that what killed them? Uh, they never recovered the bodies, I assume. So that and the fact that I'm just a better diver. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And you think your record will be broken? It's stood about eight years now. Well, records are made to be broken. Possibly someday somebody will, but the risk factor is so great now, it's, it's not that uh -huh. practical to try. Well, we're glad you came by to tell us about it. Thank you, Neil Watson. Thank you, our two imposters, for playing to tell the truth. Thank you very much. Speaking for To Tell the Truth, the Mark Dixon, Bill Todman production. 